Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and always trying your best to turn this day into a beautiful one. Now, high-end skin retouching and one click, they both don't look like they would go together, will they? <laughs> Let me share with you an example. So here we have a subject and here we have a blemish removal layer. Let's turn that on and all of the blemishes are removed. Now keep in mind, there is no software going on right over here. This is just a plain blemish removal layer. Now on top of that, there is a dodging and burning layer. Let's turn that on and flawless dodging and burning happens. Now these are all layers, have a look at it. This is very detailed gray layer for dodging and burning. You would think that this would be done by somebody manually, right? Because this is manual blemish removal. Every area where the blemishes are replaced shows up and in dodging and burning, it's a gray layer. The way we do dodging and burning, it's one of the ways of doing it, very popular one. But no, what if I told you, all of these layers, these actual layers, nothing under the hood, these actual layers were created by AI? Wouldn't that be pretty darn mind boggling? Well, in this video, we'll throw in a bunch of challenging images like this one, see how good or bad this AI technology is, and see how it compares to Photoshop's neural filter skin smoothing, and also Luminar's AI skin AI. And to spice it up, we will also compare how this automatic AI technology compares to the traditional high-end dodging and burning technique, which can take hours. I'm super excited. Actually, trust me, this is one of the most exciting pieces of technology I've seen in a while. So I'm absolutely pumped to share this with you. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and the AI plugin that has been a complete shock, at least to me, is called Retouch For Me. And that's what it exactly does. I have the details linked up in the description in case you're interested and stay till the end because we really have some one click wonders. Truly, unbelievably, just one click. Trust me on this one. So let's take a look at how it works and put it to some real test with our first example. So here we have the background layer. Let's make a copy of it by pressing Control or Command J. That doesn't change. Now let's go to filter. Retouch for me after you've installed the plugin. The first thing we need to do is healing, removing all the blemishes. So it automatically heals it. Now as the plugin loads, have a look. It is so fast, isn't it? Now, it has removed all of those blemishes. Let me make it a little bigger for you. Have a look at it. Right now, the sensitivity is at 100%. Now, keep in mind, this is not opacity. This is simply the sensitivity of blemish detection. In other words, how much of the blemishes are detected? So, if you decrease it, have a look. As you increase it, more and more blemishes are detected and removed. If you decrease it, less and less blemishes are detected. I think it's super intelligent. Now, there are some other tools which you can use to exclude some areas and all that, but we can do that later in Photoshop. But right now, the sensitivity is an important slider and here is an important check mark. If you want it to be a simple plain raster image, just uncheck it. But if you want a non-destructive blemish removal layer, just check that and click on apply. Now, I know the UI is not high tech looking, but it works flawlessly and that's what it matters. Now, let's zoom in and here's the before, here's the after. And if you just look at this layer, have a look, all of those areas where the blemishes are removed shows up. And if you want to exclude certain areas, you can simply create a mask and paint that area in black. That's all there is to it. Now let's name it blemish removal. But how about dodging and burning on you might ask? Well, let's create a stamp visible layer at the top by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E. Now let's go to filter and then retouch for me again. There are lots of plugins which we can talk about all day in another video. But for right now, let us just try out Dodge Burn. Similarly here as well, considering the resolution of the image, this is pretty darn fast. Of course, faster than if you were doing it manually. And just take a look at this. This is just out of this world. Let me zoom out a little bit. So here's the before. If I hold the space bar, it's going to show you the before. Before, after, before, after. And what I love about this, it just it keeps all the skin texture. It, it is not just a simple blur. Like in any other program of automatic skin softening, this is something else. This is like if I manually were to dodge and burn every single pore out in there. And right here at the top is blending. So it just controls the intensity of dodging and burning. So if you want a natural result, you would go towards the left. If you want a little more perfect result, you would go towards the right. So I'm going to go a little higher right here. So let's go with 134 and hold on. 
there's one last very essential setting here that completely blew me away. And that is this simple checkbox. A lot of plugins and programs like to keep it under the hood. But what I appreciate is when a program shows what it's actually doing and gives us maximum flexibility to edit that. So if I just check create soft light layer, it's going to create that gray layer. If I uncheck that, it's going to be a simple plain rasterized layer of this image. But if I do check that and then I apply, this is the gray layer. Now, of course, you need to change the blend mode from normal to soft light. Have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after. Isn't that amazing? What if we try overlay? That would be too much. The calculations would be off. Let's make it soft light before, after, and just these two bring it a long way. After that, you want to go forward? Well, there's a lot of things we can do. Let's name it Dodge and Burn. Let's create a stamp visible layer again by pressing Control, Alt, Shift and E. And let's go to Filter, Retouch for me. And how about adding shape and depth and volume? There is a plugin for that as well. It all uses AI. Now, this is the AI that I actually like. So let's go ahead and select Portrait Volumes. And you want to make sure that you have checked high resolution. A little lower resolution of an adjustment will take less time, but this is pretty fast as well. And take a look at what it does. All right, here's the before, here's the after. See that? Now, I'm not a fan of going this extreme. We'll just apply a little bit of that. You can decrease the blending from here, but what I suggest is keep it 100 and check soft light layer, hit apply. Again, it's gonna create that gray layer for you. It's pretty amazing. Now change the blend mode from normal to soft light and just decrease the opacity to 50%. That way, it would be a little less. And now, let's take a look at the overall before and after. Keep in mind, everything was automatic. You must be wondering, Unmesh, this was not one click. Wait for it. I'm going to share that with you later. But for right now, let's take a look. Here is the before. Here is the after. Pretty cool, isn't it? And if you want it to be more natural, you can always decrease the blending or decrease the opacity. That's up to you. But these are all adjustable layers. At this point, I can clearly say this is hands down the best automatic skin retouching plugin I've ever seen yet. Everything out there applies this fake blur that looks amateurish. But it would be wrong of me to make that conclusion without a comparison, right? Let's move into that. So it is time for us to compare the results between Photoshop's Neural Filters Skin Smoothing, Luminar AI's Skin AI, and of course, Retouch For Me. For a fair comparison, here I've taken one image of the subject and ran it through Photoshop's Skin Smoothing with default settings where the slider is in the middle. With Luminar AI, we chose the value of Skin AI to be at 50% for both the values with defects removal checked on because 100% is absolute extreme. And with Retouch For Me, Heal and Dodge and Burn, the default values respectively. Also, I've not run the Portrait Volume plugin because such a feature does not exist with Photoshop or Luminar and it would be unfair. And then we have stacked the results from all of these three counterparts in Photoshop as layers. Let's compare them. So this is the before and here we have the blemish removal and dodging and burning from retouch for me. So let's go ahead and remove that for simplicity. And we have the three results from the three programs. Let's zoom in and first analyze Photoshop's result. So this is the before and this is done with Photoshop. As you can see, this is a simple blur. And the biggest drawback with Photoshop is that it does not work on the body. So if I look at the neck right here, so here's the before, here's the after. It only works on the face and that's it. The second drawback with Photoshop is that it just does not work on blemishes. So it just softens the whole thing. So if I zoom in on any of the blemishes, have a look. There are a couple of blemishes here. So here is the before, here's the after. It just softens thing up. And I don't blame Photoshop for it because that was a filter for skin smoothing. But then again, if you look at the example image as you hover over them, you will notice that in this example image, the blemishes are removed. At least they're faded a little bit. But in reality, it doesn't quite work on blemishes separately. But overall, we can say that it does create a decent usable result if you're just applying it to the face. And it kind of works if you just apply a very mild version of it. Now let's look at Luminar. Let's turn off Photoshop. So this is the before again. And here is Luminar. Luminar is also good. It is definitely a little better than Photoshop as it also works on these blemishes, but it overall applies a little more softness around it. And if you look at the body, it does work on the body. So here's the before, here's the after, but it just blurs it too much. It, it's just a blur. And even when you look at the blemishes, it leaves out a lot of them. So here's the before, here's the after. It did remove some big ones, but there are some small ones which are left out. Now you can choose not to remove them with Retouch For Me, but with Luminar AI, you have no such control except for a checkbox and there's nothing we can do about it. But it's still 
better than Photoshop. So Luminar is also workable, but I would recommend not going beyond 60, 65% because beyond that, everything looks so blurry and just unrealistic. Now let's look at Retouch For Me. So this is the before and this is Retouch For Me. Damn, I'm speechless. I gotta tell you, every skin texture is still there. There is no blurring going on. Every blemish is removed. You can choose which blemishes to keep with sensitivity. And if you look at the body, it doesn't blur out the body. It keeps the texture intact right there. See, all of the skin texture intact. Look at the skin here. Every texture is intact. It's not blurred out and it's evened out with dodging and burning. You want to compare it with Luminar Photoshop? Let's do that. So this is Photoshop's result and it looks good. I must admit it. And this is Retouch For Me. There is a night and day difference. Just as you turn on Retouch For Me, all of the textures, original textures come back, every blemish is, re is removed and the skin is just evened out. Let's compare it with Luminar AI. So this is Luminar AI and this is Retouch For Me. Look at this. Luminar AI, it just looks like a Gaussian blur applied. Retouch for me, bang. It's just out of this world. So overall image, before, Photoshop, Luminar AI, retouch for me. Different game, man. Now keep in mind, I'm not taking any sides here. If it's good, it's good. I have worked with Adobe Photoshop, you know that. I have worked with Skylum Luminar. You already know that. So there is no point in me trying to take sides because I work with everybody out there. But I cannot let go of my honesty, right? If something is good and better than the program you work with, you, you gotta say it. And you know how critical I have been of Adobe in the past. Anyway, let's move on. Just to nitpick, the only con I have found with Retouch For Me plugins is that the UI looks very dated. But again, I would prefer a program with a 20-year-old UI that works than a program with state-of-the-art UI that doesn't. One more thing to keep in mind is that both Photoshop's and Luminar's features does give you the ability to go back and change the values. But what they don't give you is actual layers of how it has been softened out or how the blemishes have been removed. None of that. But retouch for me gives that to you. And if it means something to you, that is something definitely to consider. Coming to the hottest moment of this video, besides me, of course, and that is the one-click action that does everything for you. Do you want the best automatic skin retouching Photoshop action? This is it, no doubt. The downside is that it can be pretty expensive, but let me play that for you anyway. So let's open up the actions panel. If you cannot find it, let's go to window and then actions. And I can give you this action, but it will only work if you have these three plugins, the healing, dodging and burning and portrait volume. So what it does is that it plays all of them according to my settings. Default values on the first two with portrait volumes, 50%. Now let's play skin full treatment. And that's all you gotta do for your portraits. Let's keep the pen there and just wait for it. And I'm not gonna fast forward this video so that you have a clear idea of how long it takes. So in the background, it's applying all the values. As you can see, right now it's working with Retouch For Me, Dodge and Burn. It's gonna create that gray layer for you. I have had it that way. It's not just gonna create one rasterized layer. So this is the last filter that it's applying and it's pretty much done. So let's take a look. Here's the before, here's the after. It has also added that depth before, after. See that? Awesome, isn't it? So overall, again, so that you can see a little bit of the hand right there and how it has done retouching there. Here's the before, here is the after. That's all we had to do. Play the action, one click. This is not a clickbait, my friend. Now that is all cool. But the real question that still stands for professionals is this. How does it compete with manual human dodging and burning that takes hours? Now, I'm gonna lose my mind if it does it better than me. Let's take a look. So this image is from a video where I taught how to do manual dodging and burning, which you can watch right here. This can take hours depending upon your skill. If you're really fast, 30 to 40 minutes, but this is not easy. It takes a lot of practice, skill, and patience. Let's take a look at the overall before and after. So here's the before, here is the after. 
It's very hard to compete with this one, isn't it? But let's compare it with Retouch for me. Now, to be fair, I've also done sharpening, liquify. So let's turn all of that off. Enhancing eyes and some additional curves to fix the skin tone. Just keep the dodging and burning layer turned on. That's all. And the blemishes, of course. So now, here's the before. Here's the after. It's still a lot. Now, how would Retouch for me perform here? Let's make a duplicate of that. Let's play the same action right here. Skin full treatment. This is done. Now, to put them side by side, let's go to Window, Arrange, and then to Up Vertical. So, the left side is done by Retouch for me, and the right side is done manually by me. So, let's take a look at the overall before and after. So, here's the before. Here's the after of the one that I have done. And this is Retouch for me. Here is the before, and here is the after. Now, considering this is automatic, this is a pretty amazing job. Now, I'm not losing my mind because it didn't work on so much detail. Some might call the left hand side more natural, but that's not a big deal. You can come to mine and then you can just decrease the opacity of dodging and burning and this would become natural as well. Just like the left hand side, but a little better, right? So let's increase the opacity back again. Now, if you look at the little details, you would understand what I mean. Have a look under the eyes. It just doesn't even that well. Similarly, have a look at the lips. These areas, let's see, just compare it. There is a difference. But one is hours of editing that takes months and months and years and years of skills. And one is just one click. So looking at it from that perspective, I have to absolutely bow to it. What happened here is that we have reached the artistic limit. There is a limit to which the computer can go. Your artistic abilities are uniquely yours. That's why AI will never be able to replace you if you are creative. It can help you instead and become a power tool in your toolkit. For example, in this case, as I applied retouch for me, I can just edit back everything. So let's go to dodge and burn layer. So here's the before, here's the after. What I have to do is that just add some more dodging and burning here. So it has done most of the heavy lifting for me. After that, I can just take the brush, black as the foreground color or white as the foreground color, depending upon whether I want to dodge or burn, decrease the flow to about 1% and then just start dodging some of these areas and start fixing them. That's all. It's not a starting point this time, it's an ending point and you're giving the finishing touches. So coming to the big question, should you get it? Well, here's the great news. You can try it for yourself. Yes, they do have their demos. Just feed in your images. With the demos, you can see the results but not apply them. But you have a very clear idea of what it is doing. Try it for yourself. See if it works for your images and if it does, go get it. Fair enough. You just saw the tests and the comparisons we did. And if you don't believe it, try it yourself. It's free. If you ask me personally whether you should get it or not, what are you even waiting for? This is the best I have ever seen when it comes to automatic skin retouching in the entire industry up until now. The plugin was so cool that I had to contact them for a discount and Alexi, who is the CMO, was very kind enough to give us a discount code. So you can use the discount code. I think it's PixImperfect to get 20% or something off. The details are in the description, but I highly recommend you to at least get the free demo and see it for yourself. I hope I could show you something exciting in this video. For me, it sure was. If this video helped you, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any of the future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.